Hey everybody, I'm Leo, Logically, and today I am joining a game jam. Yeah, that's right, I'm joining the Woo Wee game jam. Now, I was already thinking of a sort of game that I wanted to make way before the, the theme of the jam was shown, but then it was a complete curveball and I had to redo all of my ideas. So basically what you're going to see here is everything from scratch based on the theme of the jam. Now, in case you don't know, game jams are events where developers go to make video games in a certain amount of time, and that amount of time is stipulated by the game jam itself. So for this case, in this game jam, I had 72 hours, I think. I have until Sunday to make it, and today's Friday. Um, I'm going to start off uh, talking about some of the mechanics that I was planning with this new theme. And I'm going to share with you a lot of the process that I went to in making the game because if you are watching this video right now, you probably already saw the game, but I am just about to start doing it. So I'm going to walk you through the entire thing. Now, in case you want to check out this gem in particular and other gems on the website, I'm going to have a link for itch.io, which is an amazing website for indie games and game gems. Now, let's go to the board and sketch out some ideas. The theme for this jam was intentional bugs and I was thinking that we could have some game breaking bugs and stuff that can even make the player not be able to proceed in the game and in the end I just realized that that wouldn't make the game fun. So one of our main priorities here would be to make the game fun but making game breaking bugs on purpose would make the game not be nearly as fun as it could. So here's my idea. I was thinking of making this platformer game where you have your character over here, just normal platforming stuff. Take for instance games like The New Crash, something like that, where the camera would, you know, be facing like this, and then you have a lot of different platforms with enemies in there in them and those enemies would have simple AI something very simple because I only have a weekend to do this I really need to have everything very simple and um, dive down so I can have at least a few levels that you can play through in 5 to 10 minutes of fun so what makes this game different? well there is where the intentional bugs come into play because I'm planning on having bugs that change the way that you play the game. Basically, we are just walking and then uh, your character flips out and uh, all of your controls are inverted for 10 seconds. And then maybe you're walking and your camera turns 180 degrees, just flipping your image, your final image. So it will make the game harder sometimes and sometimes can make the game easier. I was thinking of having a glitch where your character flies and basically have no gravity. Um, this will make going through obstacles a lot easier. But if you run out of the glitch juice, you would fall in a pit and would die, essentially. So the game would revolve around having these different, um, these different planes, and each plane would have enemies. That then you would have uh, moving platforms that would go from one side to the other just as you would normal platformers but then your gameplay would be completely changed for, for each glitch and my idea is that you would have one glitch every 10 to 15 seconds and then it would just rotate around a, a random selection of glitches and then the whole objective of each level would be to get to the end where you would see a portal and this portal would take you to the second and then third and then fourth levels. Also, I want to make this game in 3D and I'm going to make some very simple characters in Blender and I'm going to use Mixamo to do all of the animations for me and then I'm going to blend those animations together using normal animation blueprints in Unreal and hopefully I can achieve something that looks acceptable in just a few days. So I started working on the characters in uh, Blender and it took me about four to five hours, I think. And then I just ported them over to Mixamo and um, I put them in Unreal. Um, I also made some very basic static meshes to, to be used 
and um, it really wasn't that big deal you know um, I think that the models were very simple and very easy to make I was able to make them just using box modeling traditional box modeling and uh, in the end I think it looked very simple but still um, charming I guess combined with the animations from Mixamo so I have been making the game for a while now about seven or eight hours I think and I've made this small tutorial here where I show your the, the character using the, the animations and then space to jump, um, health pickup objects. Uh, I have yet to implement this object in the game because um, the, the character, the main character, doesn't have a health yet. I'm going to implement it. Then you have the bo the boxes, these boxes that you can interact with. Um, you can throw a few punches if you click. And um, I wanted to have a very quirky and uh, physics-based animation. You can see that the character kind of moves around a little bit weird, especially if you start uh, flailing around uh, your arms like this, just walking from one side to the other really fast. Um, I tried to have something a little bit like Gang Beasts, where it's a little bit quirky and um, works a little bit more unpredictably. And then uh, you can even collide with a few boxes or if you fall in a weird way, it also collides. So um, I think that in this way, the game is has a little bit more charm now, is a little bit more um, cartoony. Now here's the, the, the objects that give you damage if you get close to them. And then you have some coins that you can pick up as well. Um, I am yet to implement the picking up um, action. Oh, and uh, here's the portal that is at the end of each level and this is going to teleport you to the next area of the game. So here's how I did this portal. It's something very simple, honestly. I think that it looks better than it um, than the whole process of making it. Now I have the portal here in Blender to show you how it works. Um, here's the main portal and then this part outside is all black just to conceal all of this rotating inside of it. And then I just made the, the portal rotate around like this in Unreal. So I still have time today to finish the enemy AI, I think. Um, so far, they just follow you around, but they don't actually attack you. I'm going to implement the player health and then everything else. Um, I think I, and, and then t tomorrow I can start thinking about um, doing the whole glitching system. I think I need a lot of time to do that. So today I'm going to do the, the base of the game and then tomorrow I can do the glitches, the sound design and then start thinking about the menus before I finish the game on Sunday. So I think that today was a very good first day um, and uh, see you tomorrow. So I went to sleep pretty late last night because I was still finishing some of the combat and all of the um, artificial intelligence and then the coin pickups, player health, all of that good stuff. But now all of that base is done and I can focus on doing the fun part, right? Which is the glitches and the intentional bugs that are going to happen occasionally. So far I've done four of them and I think I can manage to finish all of them today and then implement sounds, menus, whatever. So um, yeah, I'll see you in a bit. So here I am with uh, half of the glitches done. I'm going just to show you uh, what they are, how they work. So after a few seconds, it's just going to activate a random glitch and this one makes you run faster and uh, increases your head size, your legs get uh, shortened. And this one I think is my favorite because it messes with your camera, um, it makes you typos combined with uh, physical animations. I really like that. Um, then we have this one. I don't even know what this does to be honest. I think I'm going to make about um, 10 or 15 different effects and it's just going to cycle through them randomly. So far I have four. So um, I think that in the end you're going to have a lot of uh, different cool little quirky effects that are going to change the way you play. Um, and for instance this one just inverted my controls. So you can see that um, I can go ham on doing this. And I think that the only limitation here is time. So yeah. So uh, just a quick little editor update, I had this idea of recording some voices to be used in game 
and then I'm going to every time that you have your glitch, it's going to use that uh, voice recording that I'm going to do right now. What's happening? Yeah, what's going on? What? <laughs> So I started my journey of making at least 10 playable levels. I have a lot of um, different clips of me just placing stuff around and just playing with the Unreal Editor. And honestly this was the most fun I've had throughout all of this process because I was just building levels and um, making stuff, placing all of the different stuff that I have previously uh, programmed. I just had a lot of fun making it, and now I'm going to walk you through some of the levels and what I did. Okay, so um, here's all of my levels, and I'm just going to randomly open some of them just to show a little bit of the structure. This one is a very um, fighting focused level where you have a lot of different um, fighting arenas to, to fight on, and then all of these spikes. I think this level is one of the more balanced ones before things start getting crazy and as you proceed to the levels you start seeing that the game is more and more glitched you see a lot of coins that instead of adding one um, point to you they just drain you of one point and then some stuff starts getting a little bit crazier um, this thing for instance instead of taking away your health it just adds on to it then you have um, a lot of these crazy cubes everywhere a lot of things, um, a lot of enemies that look very distorted and I think that just, you know, I wanted to make the game start glitching as you play it and then the very end of the game be very, very crazy. So here we have level 9 which is my favorite. Uh, it's a little bit insane when you actually play through it because you don't know a lot of what's going on. I think that um, the level design over on this part wasn't all that great because you don't actually get to see where you are um, a lot of the times and uh, but if you take a look at this level on this angle it just looks really just really quirky and um, fun I guess and then you have the last level which I wish it was a little bit um, more polished I wish I had more time to work on this last level and uh, in theory I did, but I was just really tired of messing around with level making and um, all of this stuff. So there there we go, I think I just finished the game and um, well, there you have it. So I just finished the final packaging of the game and now I think I'm all done. Um, it's weird because I still have 12 hours left. Um, I was under the impression that it would be a little bit more tight. But in the end, I think I still have some time to finish this video and then um, edit it with, you know, patience and calm. Maybe I can even rest a little bit. And I'm going to use those 12 hours, I think, for video editing. Um, I have already played through the entire game two times already. And um, it is about 20 or 30 minutes long, depending on how much you die. So now I'm going to talk a little bit on how the whole process was. And it was surprisingly fun, I loved it, each moment of it, because sometimes you kind of forget what is so fun about making video games. And I'd say that um, all of those uh, retopology, having to worry about retopology and then making normal maps and uh, rearranging your models, animating them, kind of makes you... These things kind of make you lose focus in what is so fun about making video games. And with this character, it was very very simple so I could just focus on making a, a fun little game and speaking of that I don't know if my game is actually that fun it was for me but then again I am the one who made the mechanics so I know how they work I know exactly how they work and when each glitch is going to activate of course it has some randomness to it um, I don't know exactly what is the glitch that's going to be activated but I know the timers and um, I have some good idea of what those glitches are. So I don't know how it is for someone who hasn't played my game before to actually walk in and start playing. I have a feeling that my game is a little bit frustrating. I hope not, but well, I don't know. You tell me. So now it is 4 p.m. where I live and um, I'm going to spend this rest of time 
just getting this video ready and I'm going to release both game and video um, at once. So if you are playing the game, you can have access to the video. And if you are on the video right now, you can have access to the game in the description below as well as the, the page for the game jam and all of this stuff. So in conclusion, I had a lot of fun making this and time really flew by. And I'm really excited to see the other games that will come out of this jam because that's the whole coolness of it, right? We can all share our projects and um, learn from each other. So I would really appreciate if you could leave a feedback if you have played my game and you think that I did something wrong and uh, you saw some glitches that were not intentional, please let me know. So that is it for this video. Remember, all of the links will be down in the description box below. I'm Leo, signing off.